James tells us God gives more grace. All right, I want it. Now, how do I get it? The answer is the foundational trait of not only our Christian life, but our entire existence. Hey, this is Looking Intently, and I'm going through the book of James. If you need to catch up on any videos, click the tag in the upper right. And then, if you've watched these videos and you like them, uh, that's great. But you know what's even more important? Like the old saying says, actions speak louder than words. That is nowhere more true than in the world of social media. If you like it, well, then you need to click the like or the thumbs up button. Uh, you need to leave a comment. That When I ask you to do that, that's not just to help my fragile ego. That's because YouTube looks and sees, hey, if someone liked it, if someone left a comment, it must be worth liking and commenting on. We'll push it out to more people. And of course, the, the main thing you can do is click that share button and uh, then it, it brings up a list of social media icons. You click on whatever ones you have. It walks you through it. That's when YouTube really knows, all right, people like this video will allow more people to see it. So that goes a long way. James chapter four, verse six, but he, God gives more grace. We saw that last time and we saw you know, when, what it's talking about is the fact is we can't grow and mature as a Christian. We can't become Christ-like any more on our own without God's grace than we can be forgiven on our own. You know, hopefully we know we can't do that. I can't achieve. I can't earn forgiveness. Well, I can't grow and mature on my own. In both cases, I have to want it. But then it's God's power that makes it possible. So that's the more grace. All right, I want it. How do I get it? Look what he says there. Therefore, it says, and he's referencing all kinds of different uh, passages in the Old Testament, not just one. God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. <laughs> you want to receive grace? Be humble. Hopefully, this isn't a surprise. I hope that we're seeing just how foundational this trait of humility is. And the first thing we have to see is it's not what we see or hear around us today. You know, today, if you ask someone, what's it mean to be humble? Usually, you'll get the idea is you don't brag. You know, you don't talk a lot about yourself. You know, someone says you did a great job. You're like, oh, no, you just sort of brush it off. No, humility, true humility is this idea of realizing God is God and I'm not. And everything then, all the implications of that, since he is God and I'm not, I have to surrender to him. I have to rely on him. I have to commit to him as a Christian and live out that commitment. All of that is what true humility is. And so as it talks about that, you know, we need to see, that, not just here, but this is everywhere. You know, this is one of the main lessons of creation. Think about it. What is creation? God, the creator, created everything. I wouldn't be here without him. That demands humility. It's one of the main lessons of salvation. Once again, I cannot be saved on my own. I can't do it. I have a hopeless future apart from God. That demands humility. And it's why Jesus said when he was asked, who's the greatest in the kingdom? The one who's humble. This is essential to our life as a Christian. James goes, James goes on. Uh, I'm going to get this. Trust me. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Well, there's that idea of submit, of surrender to him. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. He'd been talking about the allure of temptation before, about friendship with the world. So no, we can resist it with God's power and Satan will flee. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. There's that same idea. I draw near to God. Well, that demands humility. God will draw near to me in his grace. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. That's Hebrew parallelism. It's saying the same thing in two different ways. And so you see the parallels. Cleanse your hands, what you do. Purify your hearts, what you want, what you're committed to. Those need to be godly. Otherwise, he says, you sinners and you double-minded. Double-minded here doesn't mean you have trouble making up your mind. It means that at one point, you know, my mind is like, I want God, but I also want this. I want to be a friend with God, but I want to be a friend with the world. He says, no, that kind of double-mindedness is sin. And in verse 9, be wretched and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Well, this is a wait-a-minute moment, one of those things that you make and say, hey, and especially because James has just said, uh, just back in chapter one, consider it pure joy when you face these trials. Well, now he's saying, let your joy turn to gloom. <laughs> well, how is that? It's because he's talking to people who are tempted to be or are being in some way friends with the world. 
That's where they're getting their joy, so to speak. He says, no, that kind of joy needs to be turned to gloom. You need to realize it is gloom. It will make you miserable. You need to be miserable about the fact that you've done that. Humble yourselves, verse 10, before the Lord, and He will exalt you. So there's this closing promise of this section here. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and He will exalt you. Once again, we don't get to pick, oh, well, here's what I'd want then, God. God will exalt us. He will bless us. He will give us His grace in the ways He knows we need. Well, what should we want more than that? To be exalted by God in His way that He knows is best. We shouldn't want anything more, but what do we want? And that's the real question, isn't it? It's the whole point of this section. Do we want to be a friend with God or a friend with the world? To what degree? I've said that, you know, let's stop and think. To what degree in what ways? Yeah, I want to be a friend with God. I'm a Christian, but boy, this is real tempting. What ways? Identify them and begin to work on them. And the test then is the presence or absence of true humility. Do I have this humility? How much do you think about how important it is to be humble, to realize God is God and I'm not? And what can you do to focus on it more? Well, I give you one answer. Every time I close a video, read the good book like a good book.